بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على النبي الأمي برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الله أكبر the Sahabi we learn about is that individual whom lived longer than any other Sahabi رضي الله عنه to such an extent that there's reports that say that he actually lived up to 350 years Hafid ibn Hajar رحمه الله says this much is guaranteed that he lived 250 years so he is the longest living sahabi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu we don't say he is the last sahabi to leave this world no that is Abu Tufail Amir ibn Wathila radiyallahu anhu and he left this world in Makkah Mukarramah 110 Hijri at the age of 108 so he was two actually he was born in the second year after Hijrah where he says I spent or I found eight years in the life of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wahab bin Jarir rahimahullah says that I heard my father say that whilst in Makkah on one occasion it was the year 110 I saw a janaza procession take place and I asked whose janaza is this and I was told this was Hazrat Abu Tufail radiallahu anhu the last sahabi to leave this world in Sham was Hazrat Abdullah bin Busr radiallahu ta'ala anhu 88 Hijri The last in Kufa, Hazrat Abdullah bin Abi Awfa radiyallahu anhu. In Yemen, Hazrat Abiyad bin Bayda radiyallahu anhu. In Medina Munawwara, Hazrat Sahal bin Sa'ad radiyallahu anhu. O As-Sa'ib radiyallahu anhu. In Basra, the last Sahabi to leave this world was none other than Hazrat Anas bin Malik, the great Khadim, the special, special khadim the servant of janabi rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the last to leave this world in basra in the year 103 hijri actually 93 hijri and he was 103 years old but the sahabi who lived the longest life was none other than this great sahabi that we just learn about and we just we are actually actually discussing whom allah's nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if iman was as far as the furthest stars with Suraya such people would actually strive and sacrifice and exert themselves and do whatever possible but they would reach Iman when Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uttered this hadith uttered these Mubarak words his hand was placed on this Sahabi radiallahu ta'ala anhu Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explaining this verse of the Quran al-Kareem وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And there are others who haven't yet come but they will be coming لَمَّا They haven't come yet but they will be coming Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying that this verse means there'll be people who will be coming from all over the world And Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said this he was telling his sahaba radiyan anhu that there'll be different different people coming and he would then say to his sahaba oh my sahaba people will come to you from the four corners of the world to learn Allah's deen oh my sahaba be good to them be kind to them accommodate them that's why when the tabi'in would come sahaba radiyan anhu would value them would teach them that's why we learn if we have an opportunity to teach someone Imagine Allah is giving us an opportunity to teach guests of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he who wants to learn he who aspires to learn he who loves to learn is really special in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in explaining this verse janabi rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was indicating to this sahabi and he said him and his people he was such a sahabi when he finally made it in the company of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and sahaba radiyallahu anhum all wanted him to be part and parcel of them the muhajirin said he's from us the ansar said he's from us allah's nabi said he is from my family and here we learn how to treat new people newcomers people coming into the deen people coming in to learn how to value them how to appreciate them how to love them this is the teaching of our deen the family of islam This Sahabi radiyallahu anhu is known as the searcher of truth radiyallahu anhu. This Sahabi radiyallahu anhu is none other than Hazrat Salman al-Farisi radiyallahu anhu. He was known as Salman al-Khair, the Salman of goodness and khair. When asked 
of his lineage and genealogy, he would say, Ana Salman ibn al-Islam. I am Salman, the son of Islam, subhanallah. He taught us that look not at one's lineage or background, or judge one not due to lineage, color, background, race. All that are issues irrelevant. Allah judges not a person due to their lineage or background or color or race. Allah raises one and accepts one due to their qualities of character, humbleness, humility, akhlaq, iman, good deeds. The Sahabi was formerly known as Mabah bin Budhikshan bin Mursalan radiallahu anhu. Let's at least remember Mabah, that was his first name. And he is the searcher of truth. Ibn al-Athir rahimahullah says he comes from an area, he hails from an area in Persia known as Rama Hurmuz. Some reporters say from Jay, some say Jayyan. This was in the vicinity known as Asbahan, famously known as Asbahan. This is between Tehran and Shiraz in, an, in, in, in Iran. He says, my father was the chief of the community and the wealthiest of its people, a very high ranking individual. And he says from everyone else, he loved me the most since my birth. I was special to him. And his love for me increased incessantly. To such an extent that out of worry for me, he would detain me in the home. I would exert myself in my religion, Zoroastrianism and worship of fire. And through my efforts, I then became the caretaker of the fire, the custodian of the fire. He says, I was then made responsible to make sure that the fire remains kindled 24-7 throughout the year, every year. He says, this was my duty and it became so. And as time went on, my reliance on this started weakening because I am noticing that I am actually in charge of the fire, making sure that the fire must be kindled. Anyway, he says, my father had some property that would bring him great income and he would take care of that and re receive the fruit of that property. On one occasion this was some challenge for him and he was unable to attend to, attend to certain duties. So he says to me, beloved son, I am occupied with what you know. You go and take care of my duties at my place today. Go straight there and bring back the revenue and bring back a report of what's going on there. En route, I happened to pass a church of Christians praying and singing and their practices drew my attention, attracted me. I knew nothing of Christianity nor any other religion because I was actually detained under house arrest in my home. So I knew nothing else but my religion. But when I saw the way they turned directly to a creator, I actually aspired for something better, for the truth. And I said to myself that this is better than what we are upon. We are worshipping something that I have to maintain. He says, I joined them and I rather enjoyed what they were doing. And I remained for the rest of the day with them till sunset. I didn't end up going to see to my father's duties. I then posed the question to them, where is the source and origin of this religion? They said in the lands of Sham, Palestine. Anyway, that night when I returned home, my father met me with anguish, eager to know what had happened. I said, respected father. You know, en route, I passed by these people in a church and the way they worshipped Allah was astonishing. And I remained there worshipping. He was then startled and frightened. He said, son, there's no other religion better than yours, the re your religion, your creed and your forefather's creed. I said, no father, it is not so. I've experienced this religion, it is better. My father, out of fear that I would apostate or leave his creed, he then detained me even to a greater extent. I was now shackled and kept in his huge home. So this was one of his early difficulties. But as his character was very good, Allah Ta'ala made it such that he man managed to send a message to the people who were worshipping in the church. One lesson we can learn from here. Not long ago, there was an alim who came to me and mentioned, mentioned to me that his father was kidnapped in a certain way. And those who were actually keeping, keeping him under house arrest because he was then totally covered and his eyes were blocked. And then he was taken to an area that he didn't know its whereabouts. And there were people who he wasn't uh, managing to meet them all the time. The people on the top who wanted 
exorbitant amounts. But there were those who were surrounding him, bringing his meals and so forth. He treated them with character, inviting them to Allah, showing them the beauty of Islam. Obviously, the meals that they were partaking of was of a lower value. And then what was sent to him was of much more value because he was kept under house arrest because they were waiting for amounts. And then he would show character to these people. And then he would actually invite them to join him in prayer and also explain to them prayer. And he would say, you must awaken me early in the morning for tahajjud and for fajr. They would say, how can we do that? He says, I don't have a means of waking up and you've taken my phones and so forth. You just make sure I have to wake up. But why? And then he would explain how beautiful it is to turn to the Creator and that everything is from Him. And those few days with them inspired them and through that character Allah Ta'ala helped him escape from that difficulty and perriment that he was in. And subhanallah, this lesson is deduced from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The Nabi of Allah, a man comes barging into my home, usurping my rights, wanting my wealth, what do I do? Allah's Nabi said, ذَكِّرْهُ billah. The first thing you do is remind him of Allah. Remind him about Allah, that Allah is watching, Allah is seeing, Allah is one. Allah has no partner. Explain to him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O Nabi of Allah, if he does not want to listen and does not want to desist, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, seek the assistance of others and you fight back. And O Nabi of Allah, if there's no one to assist me, Allah's Nabi said, you single-handedly defend yourself and your family and your wealth. And if in that you die, you're a shaheed. So these are approximately the words of the hadith of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the detail of the hadith which is concisely in Sahih Bukhari. Man qutila duna malihi fa huwa shaheed. Wa kama qala al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this as Hazrat Salman showed character, he managed to send this letter to the church asking them if they knew of people traveling to the lands of Palestine, the lands where Isa alayhi salam's teachings are upheld. Please notify me. And Alhamdulillah, when the message returned to him of the time and the whereabouts and the date of departure, he then managed to escape through character. He managed to reach them and he then undertook this long, arduous journey in the search of truth. That's why he was known as the searcher of truth, Hazrat Salman radiallahu an. He undertook his journey to the lands of Sham and Palestine, the lands of Isa salam. When he arrives there, he asks for the bishop, the man in charge, the main person in charge of the church and so forth. He says, I approached him requesting his permission, seeking his permission to remain in his service and company to learn. Sir, I would love you affording me the opportunity to remain in your company, to serve you, learn from you, and pray behind you. He says, you're welcome. And I remained for a long period of time serving him. But he says, in serving him, I found that he was really a man of evil intentions. He would advocate something and carry out something else. He would encourage the rewards of, of deeds, but he would do totally the opposite in his private life. And whenever anyone would contribute to their cause, he would hoard it all for himself, not giving the needy and the rightful recipients anything whatsoever. He had actually filled their big, big pots, seven and more of gold and valuables. Hazrat Salman says, I detested his despicable practices. He says, when he died and they gathered to then bury him, I then had to let the cat out of the bag and say this to them because I couldn't keep it in any longer. And I said, really, your teacher was an evil man. He advocated something, carrying out something else. Actually, at first, they were upset to hear this from him. And when he proved it, they said, this man does not deserve an honorable death. They stoned him. And it was a despicable ending that they did give him. He says then another was then appointed in placement, in replacement of him. Subhanallah, look at the quality of Hazrat Salman. He found one man to be evil, but that didn't make him give up. And this is a very important lesson. When someone wants the truth, yes, certain difficulties that we face should not let us give up the cause. Many a time, and this is an advice that we can give, 
other non-Muslim associates that we have, they might have found certain inappropriate actions in Muslims. And Allah Ta'ala improve us as Muslims. Allah give us tawfiq to be true to our teachings of Islam, the character, the teachings, the beliefs, the treatment of others. Allah give us tawfiq. This Mubarak month of Ramadan is right in, at our doorstep. Really, let's inculcate in us the practices of Ramadan, treating people well. Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith of Hazrat Salman, Hazrat Salman's hadith, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah blesses those people who make work even easy for their subordinates and employees and servants in this month of Ramadan. Allah will bless such individuals. Let's talk to people politely. It's not an excuse that we're hungry in the month of Ramadan that we can speak the way we want, abruptly, arrogantly, flamboyantly, with vulgarity. Really, such attitudes are despicable, unacceptable in our faith, unacceptable in our deen. Who are we? to look down upon Allah's creation. Yes, they are servants. If we cannot talk to people properly, rather do it ourselves, otherwise we are answerable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We think we can talk to Allah's creation the way we want. Do we own them? Do we own them? Did we create them? Do we give them uh, oxygen? We need them. Just as they could be needing us. Allah made the system like that. Allah's beloved was asked, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how many a time do I pardon a servant and employee? The beloved of Allah says, even 72. Meaning, as much as possible. But we cannot speak with vulgarity. And hunger in Ramadan is not an excuse at all. It is taboo to actually be vulgar with Allah's creation. May Allah save us. But look at the purity of Hazrat Salman. This also is a lesson. When someone is true, he will never forsake deen and the search of truth just due to people who are hindrances. He says, I patiently remained in the company of my second teacher. And he says, I found him to be an amazing man, abstaining from the embellishments of this world and zealous over good deeds and actions of the hereafter with true belief in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, up till the time I met the people of the five prayers, meaning the Muslims, I found him to be one of the best. And like that from teacher to teacher, Hazrat Salman would spend years in their company. And on the dying bed of his teacher, he would seek his guidance on where should he go next. And his teacher would send him to another town and interestingly, he wouldn't allow Salman to remain there to follow his deputy who would take over after him. And this was also another lesson historically, that this was a dying creed. This deen was, was dying because people following the truth were no longer existing because the truth was not being upheld anymore. And a lot of inappropriate, incorrect teachings were coming into the teachings of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam by certain insincere, hypocritical followers. That's why Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he wrote his letter to the Roman emperor, Allah's Nabi said, there are many Arusiyin, Arisiyin, good followers, of, of Arus and Aryus who actually was a firm believer in the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you hinder such people and stop the message from coming to them, that means those who are truly following Isa alayhi salam are actually being suppressed. And if they are not going to be given the opportunity of accepting the truth due to you, then you will face the sin and you will face that punishment. So Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa indicated through some of these hadith that they were some of these good people. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala nabi al-Ummi bi rahmatika ya arham ar-Rahimin. Ya Rabbi salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayr al-khalqi kullihimi. Alhamdulillah. With the fadl and the karam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are breathing these moments in this Mubarak month of Ramadan. This is Allah's favor. This is Allah's kindness. We really have to appreciate this great gift of Allah Ta'ala. This guest Allah has given us, this month of Ramadan, let's value it. Let's benefit from this month to the optimum. Let's increase in good deeds. Let's seize every opportunity. Let's not waste a second in tilawah of the Qur'an, in serving 
Allah's deen, in serving humanity, in uplifting Allah's name, in spreading Allah's words, in serving humanity, in bringing people towards Allah's deen. Let's take every opportunity to do every good deed possible. As long as it is done in accordance to the sunnah of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with sincerity, let's do the best we can. Allah give us tawfiq. The beloved of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in this month of Ramadan, فَأَرُوا اللَّهِ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ خَيْرًا Prove yourself to Allah. Show yourself to Allah. Let's show off to Allah for Allah's pleasure. Let's seek Allah's pleasure, Allah's happiness. Let's attract Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. This is what the month of Ramadan is all about. Allah's mercies are so available in this month that the hadith actually says, فَإِنَّ الشَّقِي مَنْ حُرِمَ فِيهِ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ One who in this month is deprived of Allah's mercy is really one who is deprived and wretched. Allah save us. We were discussing the life of this great Sahabi Hazrat Salman anhu, right till the point of where he finally found his freedom. Allah Subhanahu when he was uh, right till the point where he embraced Islam. When he then embraced Islam, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't leave him to say now Salman you Muslim, you're on your own. But Islam teaches us care for every person. Oh Salman, you are now in bondage. What you need to do is work towards your freedom. O oh, Nabi of Allah, this person whom I am under his superiority, really ill treats me. He's not going to give me this opportunity. Allah's Nabi said, ask for a mukataba, an opportunity to pay your way to freedom. So Hazrat Salman took the advice and spoke to his master. His master was really abrupt with him. Oh, you want freedom? This is what you have to pay. And that's what Hazrat Salman had to do. Allahu Akbar. He comes to Allah's Nabi, he was disheartened, he was hurt. Allah's Nabi tells him, what's the matter? Do not worry. He says, O Nabi of Allah, such demands that are so exorbitant, impossible. Allahu Akbar. Allah's Nabi Wasallam says, don't worry, it will be sorted. From the member, he requested Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, let's every one of us contribute. Bring your seedlings to this property on this farm of this individual, this Jewish individual, bring it there at this time, I will be planting these trees for Hazrat Salman. And Allah's beloved, one after the other, planted every one of those 300 trees that were part of the requisite towards Hazrat Salman radiallahu's freedom. And within a short span of time, SubhanAllah, Imam At-Tirmidhi rahimahullah brings this report under the incident of the seal of prophethood, under that chapter in his book called Shama'il. A book that every one of us should read and study the beautiful ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we should encourage our children from young to study this kitab. It is about the beautiful appearance, the internal and the external beauty of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Instill in our children the love of the ahadith and the love of the the, the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from a very young age. Read this kitab at home. Really, it is phenomenal. So under the chapter of the seal of prophethood, the chapter describing Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's Mubarak seal on his shoulder, behind his Mubarak heart, under that discussion comes this hadith. Within a short span, those trees were sky high, but 299 grew. One didn't grow and it took its normal pace because it was, it was planted by someone else. And the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa replanted it and within a short span of time, it was sky high. That was these date palm trees. By the way, we are in the month of Ramadan. Let us learn a lesson from the date palm tree. You will be hearing this in the quran e kareem Quran gives the parables of the date palm tree repeatedly. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, وَمِنَ النَّخْلِ مِنْ طَلْعِهَا قِنْوَانٌ دَانِيَتُهُ وَجَنَّاتٍ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ وَالزَّيْتُونَ وَالزَّيْتُونَ وَالرُّمَّانَ مُشْتَبِهًا وَغَيْرَ مُتَشَابِهِ انظروا إلى ثمره إذا أثمر وينعه إن في ذلكم لآيات لقوم يؤمنون In verses 99 of this chapter, An'am. Chapter An'am is the chapter Six, the sixth chapter of the Quran Kareem. And interestingly, after the four surahs, which are Baqarah, Al Imran, Nisa, Maida, those are surahs revealed in Medina Manawara. An'am is a Meccan revealed chapter. Anyway, the topics 
in the surahs revealed in Medina Munawwara are different. And the topics revealed in the chapters of the Quran Kareem in Makkah Mukarramah are different. Keep this in mind when listening to the tilawa in the taraweeh prayer and, in, and, and when reciting the Quran Kareem. Allah gives the parable of the date palm tree and the way it grows and the clusters that become beautiful and become heavy and they bend down with beautiful sweet dates and in gardens of vineyards and olives and pomegranates, trees and fruit looking like each other and looking different. Allah then says, Unzuru introspect O my servants admire Allah's beautiful creation ila thamarihi the fruit look at that date ila asmara look at the mango look at the pomegranate look at every fruit look at the watermelon as it bears and as it ripens Allah says in this for you are signs for the people of Iman that admire the date where does it come from a pit, a pit that is so hard, where does the sugar come from? Where does the ingredients come from? Where does the fragrance come from? Where does the texture come from? Every sort of date, the date that is fresh is rutab. It has a different taste. The date that is dry, called tamr, it has a different taste. The date, date that is half ripe and it's still unripe on the other side, that's called balah. It has a different texture, something similar to a coconut. So, so beautiful, every type of date, every leg, every way, every step of the way. The date, Kajur has a different name as it starts to grow. Tala, it grows further. Ighrid, then it becomes Zahu, then it becomes Balah, then it becomes Rutab, then it becomes Tamr. So interesting, so beautiful. The hadith actually says, honor your aunt the date palm tree then the hadith explains further because the date palm tree how is it our aunt the same soil Hazrat Adam alayhi salam was created from was the soil that the date palm tree was created from in the hadith of Sahih Bukhari the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi salam one day this hadith is of Ibn Umar anhuma, he one day asked Sahaba some sort of a riddle he also asked questions to create the interest to learn in his ummah, in his sahaba anhum. And he asked them about the tree that, that is like the mu'min. The parable of this tree is like the mu'min. Allahu Akbar. Ibn Umar anhum, mentioned to his father later on, Father, I really had the answer, but out of humbleness and respect for Abu Bakr and Umar and senior sahaba present there, where can Ibn Umar give such an answer? Allahu Akbar. Hazrat Umar says, you know, if you actually gave the answer, it would have brought a lot of joy to me. It would have, it would have made me really proud and it would have been a means of du'as for you from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah's beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that tree that is like the mu'min is the date palm tree. Allahu Akbar. How is the date palm tree like a mu'min? The date tree grows deep into the ground like the mu'min is deep, root, deep rooted in iman he doesn't take effect from environment he is strong irrespective of the season irrespective of the environment he protects he preserves his iman and the believer's character is so beautiful as well because the date palm tree is such even children or people will throw stones but it will just repel by dropping beautiful sweet dates that's the character of a mu'min. People in their vulgarity, in their disrespect, in their disregard. A believer will not retaliate in a negative manner, but he will react in a most beautiful manner, an impeccable manner. Because our example is Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Something else, the date palm tree gives off fruit, different types of dates throughout the year in the same way. A mu'min is not just seasonal. He does good deeds all round throughout the year, every opportunity, every occasion. Yes, he finds boosters in the month of Ramadan, but that lasts him forever and ever. That when he leaves this world also, he leaves this world doing good deeds, increasing in good deeds. That's why the dua of the mu'min is, Oh Allah, the last day of my life must be better. I mean my life indeed must increase Allah. Every opportunity, every occasion, that when I'm leaving this world, I'm even becoming closer to you. Oh my kind, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something else interesting about the date palm tree is the fact that like a human being inhales oxygen and exhales carbon dioxide and trees inhale 
carbon dioxide most of the time and exhale oxygen this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness this is Allah's system of, of, of beauty and balance in this universe Allahu Akbar but the date palm tree is extra special most of the time it inhales oxygen and exhales carbon dioxide something else very interesting on the date pit when breaking the fast with kajur which is sunnah and partaking of the kajur the tamar the date in the time of suhoor which is also the sunnah part of the sunnah of janabi rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam analyze the date pit that is called in arabic hasat this pit the date seed look at it closely scrape it a little with your nail you'll find around that pit something very faint and something very uh, intricate it's like colorless and tasteless and weightless but you can feel it that in arabic is called titmir when carrying out this process and doing this experiment I would love you to analyze this verse of the Quran Kareem where Allah says in Surah Fatir وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ مَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِن قِطْمِيرِ إِن تَدْعُوهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُوا دُعَاءَكُمْ وَلَوْ سَمِعُوا مَا اسْتَجَابُوا لَكُمْ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُونَ بِالشِّرْكِكُمْ وَلَا يُنَبِّئُكَ مِثْلُ خَبِيرِ Allah says, whoever you may turn to, O my bando, O my servants, O my creation, whoever you may turn to in the universe, any superpower, any person with greatness, with glory, with position, with status, with degrees, with authority, whoever you may turn to, Allah says, they do not have any of what you think they have. What they have is what Allah gave them. Allah says, whoever you may turn to, they don't even possess, not the kajur, the date, the flesh, not even the date pit, not even the wrap, which is weightless, colorless, tasteless. The wrap that you find that is faint, attached to the date pit, which is qitmir. Allah says, all mankind, all the creation, Farsh selekar, arsh tak, from the farsh to the arsh, sab murda hai, all the creation of Allah. Don't even possess qitmir. Who are we turning to? Who are we admiring? Who are we seeking from? Who are we hankering behind? We should hanker and admire and aspire to please our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must say what Allah wants us to say. We must do what Allah wants us to do. We must act in the manner that Allah wants us to act with ikhlas and we must react in the manner that Allah wants us to react. That is success. This is why we have this month of Ramadan. And this is the lesson from the date pit and from the date seed. So daily let's take this lesson as we break the fast and remind each other the best way to intake lessons is to share and invite. Within a short span of time, Alhamdulillah, Hazrat Salman's trees were lofty and Alhamdulillah, that was almost his freedom. He now had to pay an exorbitant amount of gold, 40 uqiyas, and he still thought, how am I going to pay it? Subhanallah. The beloved of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had an egg size of gold. Allah's Nabi said, take this and pay from this. So he said, I was thinking to myself, Aina taqa'u hadihi mimma alayya This small amount, how am I going to pay? 40 uqiyas. He said, I just listened to Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I started scraping gold from that egg, egg's weight and size. And Allah made it, that gold kept on coming from there as I scraped it, as I filed it, and I started weighing. And Allahu Akbar, if there was a, a debt on my head equivalent to the mountain of Uhud, Allahu Akbar, Allah's Nabi's beautiful words, Allah's Nabi's beautiful teaching, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that barakah that came from Allah's Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that one egg size of gold would have paid even the debts equivalent to Uhud on my shoulders were it so. Subhanallah. This is the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the care Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed to his one one ummati.
Allahu Akbar. Then Allah's Nabi Sallallahu had Hazrat Salman by his side because by the time he paid his amounts and he was free and then he joined Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was not ever treated as an outsider. That no, you come from Persia, you are different. And this is teaching us how a society in Islam should be. That we are metropolitan. We are all encompassing. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sallallahu taught us to become like the sun. The sun gives light to everyone. Be caring, be kind, be respectful, unify everyone, love everyone. We are the Ummah of Rahma Lil Alameen. So Hazrat Salman was 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 so welcomed and so loved that even on one occasion Sahaba were arguing, no no Salman is from us, the Muhajirin said. The Ansar said, No no Salman is from us. Allah's Nabi says, Leave that Salman is from my family. Salman minna Ahl al Bayt, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how Sahaba made an outsider feel. They felt welcome. The hadith in Sunan at Tirmidhi, Alama Tirmidhi Rahimahullah brings this report that in Kana Ashabuhu, La Yastajlibunahum ila al Majlis, O Kama Qal. Sahaba used to bring newcomers and they used to sit in the Majlis of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A new person generally is he has a sense of, of, of strangeness. He feels uncomfortable, especially because he comes for the first time. Sahaba used to make that individual feel comfortable. Do not worry. You may ask what you like to ask. Sahaba used to allow and afford the newcomers the opportunity to dialogue and discuss and speak to the beloved of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they would respectfully listen and learn from those conversations. Sahaba used to make them feel comfortable. Allah's Nabi even taught this beautiful sunnah that some, sometimes someone can't reach me and doesn't know how to share some questions that they have in their heart and you bring their matter to me and we solve it through that through that Allah will keep your feet firm on the day of judgment because you be became a means of the resolution of someone's troubles and someone's challenges this is what Allah's Nabi taught Hazrat Ibn Abbas was in i'tikaf in Masjid the Nabawi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and a stranger comes in in worry and he asks him what is the matter this is our deen when someone is seen in distress, a mu'min worries and he cares. Is there anything that I may do for you? What can I do for you? He said, I have this challenge. Hazrat Abbas said, I can solve it for you. And he exits the masjid. And the man says, Hazrat, you are in itikaf. I'm disturbing you. And then he looked towards the blessed grave of Janabi Rasulullah And he says, I heard the beloved of Allah say, and it wasn't long ago, that he who undertakes a walk and he strives and he tries to fulfill the need of his brother Allah, Allahu Akbar this is more meritorious than 10 years i'tikaf kana khayra lahu min i'tikafi ashri sini so this is the temperament and the mizaj Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prepared his ummah upon service for humanity and this is the most meritorious deed Allah give us tawfiq